today I'm going to show you how to upcycle an old um, serving tray. This one I got from a thrift store um, and it was really in sad shape. I wish I would have gotten a picture of it before I painted it. Um, but it was just an old wood tray and it had um, some kind of design from the 80s on it. So I painted it white. actually used this stain blocker um, because some of the wood some of it was bleeding through. Um, so I used General Finishes Stain Blocker and um, painted it at least three times so that um, some of those stains would stop bleeding through. Um, so what you see now is just the white tray after it's been painted. Um, you guys all know how to paint at this point, so I didn't show you that step. Um, but what I'm using, I'm going to decoupage um, using my XL paper, that's the 20 by 30 size. This is an 18 pound tissue paper um, and it's meant for furniture or larger projects like this. Um, so I'm using um, a brand new one, it's called Christmas Squares and I'm gonna make a lovely vintage looking Christmas tray um, using decoupage, paint and resin. Um, so quite a few different products here. Um, and I wanted to get, you know, kind of, I've got all these lovely little images, Christmas images on these squares, and I wanted to use as many of them as possible. But when I laid it all the way it was designed, when I laid it on the tray, a lot of it was getting cut off, and um, I just wasn't really using the space that I had very well. So I decided to lay it out myself um, using the individual elements and just kind of cutting and then making a collage. So it's kind of um, the end result is really just piece, pieces pieced together, um, individually decoupaged. And um, anyway, so I just used Aline's Collage Podge. It's the product that I always use. Um, but the options are really limitless when it comes to the medium that you use. Um, if you've seen any of my videos before, I feel like a broken record when I say it, it doesn't really matter what product you use. Um, this happens to be the first one that I ever um, tried and I liked it and it works fine. So um, I generally like a matte finish when I do my projects. Um, and if I do want a gloss finish, I don't rely on this product to do it, I'll do that with a different top coat. So for um, general purposes for decoupage, I, this is pretty much the product that I always use and I use the matte finish. Um, tissue paper is a little bit trickier to work with than rice paper. Um, I've sped this up a little bit. I'm not trying to show you all of the uh, techniques of decoupage here. I just really am trying to show you how to piece them together to get a, a finished product. So I'm not really going into the mechanics of decoupage. Um, but one thing I will wa do want to show you here, look how I'm pulling this off because it wasn't where I wanted it. And I'm able to pull it off intact and lay it right back down. Um, and that is one of the features of this. It's this tissue paper. It's a little bit heavier weight is that it will hold up um, if you make a mistake, you can correct it. It it did rip a little bit in that corner, in a corner. You can't really see it on the video, but it wasn't an issue. I was just able to kind of put the glue right over it and lay it right back down. Um, so it is a nicer, heavier weight, but it's, it's not like a super thin tissue paper, but it's not as thick as rice paper. Um, so it is, again, it is a little bit trickier. Now, when I did this, I was not particularly careful and I did end up with a lot of wrinkles and um, I didn't, I knew that I was going to put resin over the top so I wasn't too worried about the wrinkles. If you weren't going to use resin, then you'd want to be a lot more careful than I'm being in this video and be more exacting, um, unless you don't care about the wrinkles. and. <laughs> Um, and then it doesn't matter. So, um, you know, I, I kind of liked that it had some because you can actually see them away in a way when the resin shines through um, and it makes it look a little bit more vintage. So 
I didn't mind that I had some when I was doing this. Um, so if you've never used resin before, um, the product that I'm going to use is called um, Art Resin. It is a food safe resin um, and it is a non-toxic. It doesn't have any chemicals or odors um, and it dries it dries in 24 hours so it is a good art friendly product um, and I carried that particular brand that's the only one that I carry in my store at thdecoratl.com um, and it's really the one that I that I primarily use for projects like this and also for um, tabletops coasters other art artsy type projects um, so you need to have um, for a, a, pr a project about this size I used about seven ounces so you could start with just I've got an eight ounce kit that you could start with if you're doing a small project just to see you know how it works um, it is expensive though I will say so um, the more you buy the uh, if you buy a larger size, you're getting more for your money, in other words. Um, so I'm just going around. This is a paint couture paint. It's a, in a metallic. It's called Pale Gold. And I am going to paint um, this whole tray in this pale gold color. It's a beautiful metallic. It gives it a nice enamel finish um, when, it's, when it's dry. Um, and it just covers so well. So I really like this paint if I'm doing an all over gold. Um, and again, the name of it is pa uh, Pale Gold. It's from Paint Couture. Um, I, I do also stock Paint Couture as well um, on my TH Decor site. Um, so I ended up doing two coats of this and I could have, um, I could have left it alone because it was just so elegant, beautiful, and sleek, but I did it. I did decide to um, to age it a little bit with some brown wax. Uh, once it was dry, I just thought it was a little too shiny. the The rest of it looked very vintage, and then I thought it was a little too shiny and new looking. So I um, I used some brown wax to age it down. Um, so. I did need two coats of it and you can see it's a little bit tricky to get around some of those edges so I actually did end up um, painting some gold uh, in the design as well just kind of dry brushing it in there which I thought gave it a nice effect as well um, so but you could use a really thin brush I had no idea when I started this project I had no idea where it was gonna go or how it was gonna look I would just sort of did it on the fly um, so I did not have a plan and I probably didn't have all the right tools in front of me um, but you can see I've got that little tiny flat brush that I'm trying to go around and get in some of those seams um, <clears throat> which would be a really good tool but um, I decided not to be super careful about it and uh, just sort of blended it out along the edges of the design a little bit as well and that gold really does pop so nicely because there are some gold elements in inside the design, like with the crown and the bird um, and uh, the lights from the Christmas tree. <clears throat> so this paper comes in three different sizes, the XL, um, which you could use in bits and pieces for projects like this. You could use it as is for a, a larger project, like a chest or something. Um, or um, you know you can you can definitely cut it up and use it in in um, what a, you know just the diff the different elements like if you wanted to just cut the bird out and use that for its own project that would be fine too. Um, so so many it's a very versatile design, a lot of different ways to use it. Uh, it also comes in an A4 size, <coughs> which is the equivalent of a lever letter size, and then an A3, which is slightly larger, is 11 by. 7, um, 11.7 by 16 and a half. So this one does come in all three sizes. All right, so here I'm going to show you how to use that resin. This is art resin. 
um, and I'm pouring equal parts of the hardener and the resin itself. Um, so it is a two-part mixture, and I am stirring this for three minutes, um, making sure, and I have sped up the three minutes because I don't want you to sit here for three minutes watching me stir. <laughs> Um, but I did stir for three minutes, scraping down the sides um, and making sure that it was completely mixed uh, before moving on. So now I'm just pouring um, that mixture right over the top of the paper. The paper was covered with um, the decoupage product, the Aline's Collage Page. So it is... Um, I mean, I won't say it's waterproof, but it does have a sealer on it so that that paper underneath is not going to get um, wet with this product. So it is protected by that layer um, of collage page. And then you can pour the resin right over the top without any other products in between. Um, and I just used a um, popsicle stick, a, a large popsicle stick, and I'm smoothing it out to take the product all the way um, to the edges and making sure that I don't have any gaps or holes. So um, a couple of things. So, you know, normally you want to wear gloves. I've used this product so many times that I, I don't get it on my hands anymore. Um, and it is a self-leveling. So when I'm scraping across, I'm trying to kind of just do it at the surface, but it, it is going to um, even out, if you will, and it will level. And then, you know, you're going to get some air bubbles. So I'm using a kitchen blowtorch to heat up the resin to to pop those bubbles, okay? And it's just a little quick flick over the top um, to pop the bubbles. So you don't wanna hold it on there for too long in any one spot because you could risk burning through and you know, starting a fire. <laughs> it's just a quick motion over the top um, to pop the bubbles. And I'm kind of just looking for all the bubbles as I go, smoothing them out, heating them up with the gun. You could also use a heat gun. It would achieve the same purpose as the kitchen torch, but um, you give me an option to use some fire and I'm gonna use fire. <laughs> so, um, you, know, you, you know, you definitely don't wanna do this with little kids around it needs to be uh, it needs to be done kind of in a safe environment so um, and you'll get the hang of it it doesn't it won't seem so scary after you do it a few times you're like okay you know because it it's concentrated so that if you use the right tool um, it's just a kitchen tool or like a flambe or something um, it does go right where it needs to it's not gonna torch everything out else out I had one stubborn little spot that I had to, I think I got like some hair or some lint or something in there. Um, so I was really trying to work on that area. Um, it does need to be super clean, you know, no thumbprints or no stray hairs, um, while, you know, before you do it. And then while it's drying, you don't want it to attract all the, uh, the random lint and things that's in the, that are in the air. It, it will show, you know, all the dust and um, little micro particles. So um, with this, you, you would leave it to sit for about 15 minutes and then you'd come back and pop out any more bubbles that have risen to the surface. And then you probably do it again in another five minutes. So I ended up doing about three different passes you know, waiting five to 15 minutes in between. Um, but it does start to harden after about 25 minutes or 30 minutes. So you don't want to torch it anymore after it's started to harden. 
I let it dry overnight um, in a warm room. I turned the uh, heat to 74 um, and then let it kind of sit overnight undisturbed. And in the morning, I had this beautiful glassy finish. Um, and again, I decided that I thought the gold was a little bit too bright. So I'm just using Stamperia antiquing paste to, um, to tone down some of the gold a little bit. It's a brown wax type paste. And I'm just kind of going around the edges and, um, and, and toning it down. But, you know, again, I had no idea what I was going to do. And then I was just super happy with the end result. I ended up with this beautiful Christmas vintage looking tray. Um, so I think I'm probably going to keep it. <laughs> but um, so that's it. I mean, super simple, easy project um, with an excellent result. So thanks for watching and um, hit subscribe.